Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sean with Scient, and welcome to our third webinar of a three-part webinar series. Today we're going to chat about monetization capabilities. How do you demonstrate the value of IoT and what are some ways you can think of monetizing all of these this connected equipment solutions that you may have or are building in your company currently today? Or, well, is to focus on some of the different ways companies are monetizing IoT solutions today take a look at a few different models that we've seen and worked with customers. And then how do you, where should you start and how do you mature that over time so that you can get the full value and create a, a solid and strong business revenue stream for your company and for the solutions that you a Brief agenda, we'll introduce myself and Matt today. We'll talk a little bit about where IoT creates value uh, start there. We've got to have a, a foundation as we talk about everything. We'll talk about strategies for monetizing IoT. We'll look at our conception of an IoT monetization maturity. You know, where do you start? Where do you go? And then we'll talk a little bit, lastly, about are you ready to monetize? Are you at a point where it's, it's ready to not just talk about the discussion, but ready to move forward with and talk about any of the guys would, that you guys have we'd love my name is Sean Otto. I currently lead the business analytics or the advanced analytics team for Scient. We focus on designing artificial intelligence machine learning models on IoT solutions, work across a variety of different industries today. And the real goal of what we're trying to do is go that last mile and make sure that you're realizing the value of all of the data that you're collecting today. And hi, my name is Matt Winkler. I am Science Chief Digital Solutions Architect for the, the uh, Industrial Energy and Natural Resources Business Unit. So I'm uh, a multifaceted engineer um, coming from that, coming to IoT from the really technical side, um, and helping meet our customers' needs um, and the problems that they're having in, in digitization with uh, with our skill sets. And so. Who is Scient? Um, overall, Scient is a uh, global design, build, operate, and maintain partner uh, for many organizations ac across the globe in different business units, uh, whether it's you know aerospace, rail, heavy equipment, uh, industrial equipment, utilities. Um, we help them design, build, operate, and maintain their, their equipment um, from an engineering standpoint. And we've also, um, begun working on that digital side of product development with our with our partners as well um, taking those designs to the to the next level to that digital level uh, with the IOT with analytics um, with new technologies like AR VR so we'd like to start today um, with a quick poll this is something that we've asked uh, in the other two webinars, and we, we really want to understand uh, for the audience that's on the phone today, how far along is your organization on the IoT and connectivity journey, just to kind of get a feel for, for where we are. So we're going to open up a poll here uh, for about a minute or so um, and get your, um, get your input on, on where you believe your company is or your organization is with this IoT and connectivity journey. So we'll give you about a minute here, uh, and then we'll uh, take a look at the results and, and take the conversation from there. So we're closing the poll here. Um, it looks like we've got a got a pretty large dichotomy here in the uh, in the audience today. So we've got uh, a good amount of our participants that have just really started thinking about IoT. They haven't really uh, 
done anything as far as a proof of concept yet, but they're really just starting to get think, thinking about uh, how it can affect their business. And then we've got another another uh, group of participants on the other end of the spectrum where they are they've got products in the marketplace they're generating revenue and. Um, interesting to see that kind of a split in a, in a discussion today where we're going to talk about monetization strategies. Um, we've got a lot of people that are thinking well ahead and people that are thinking maybe how can I optimize what I'm doing a little bit better. So that's, I think that's really good context uh, for Sean and I as we take this conversation forward. And, and if you're just start, if you're thinking about getting started here and you're looking at its implications, um, you know that there's something to be said about not being the, the the leader jumping into the pool before everybody else is. Um, you know, we've seen and worked with a variety of companies that have, at the end of the day, um, started this IoT journey, uh, and a lot of it is just about, hey, let's connect equipment, and they put it up there, and they they miss some bigger vision that's needed to execute this. And IoT really has to be thought of as a separate product that you are putting together for your customers a separate revenue stream and a separate solution. And so we have the other two webinars where we've talked about what is it in general, you know, the whole IoT stack, got a little bit technical there. And then uh, it, it, we talked about this particular slide on the other two webinars also. And I think it's very good as a foundational piece to identify what are we trying to do with IOT, Why, what is the big buzz around connected equipment and digitizing everything? You know, at the end of the day, it starts with the connection and moves to that human value, which at the end of the day is a connection in and of itself. So we take devices, we connect them. Uh, we, with that connection, that we're censoring certain information, we're communicating that information. We start cloud storage or a big data solution. About four years ago, big data was the big buzz. How are we going to store it? Technology helps us store a lot of this information. On a given day, your physical body can restore, you know, can record four gigabytes of information. And if you've got sensors on every person out there, you know, seven billion people times four gigs a day can be a lot of information. And so the storage is important. Now, what are you going to do with that? All that. Data analytics is where we come in and we identify the value of that. And then once we craft some value out of it, we have to transmit that value. Where is it going? Are we integrating it with other systems? At the end of the day, we're doing this also that people can use it. People can enhance their lives and their experience and improve business experience at the same time too. IoT really is a game changer for every company out there today. We consider it table stakes. Your success is not gonna be measured by simply having connected equipment. You need to, your success is going to be measured by what you're doing with your connected equipment. You know, a few years ago, Wall Street was looking at companies, what are you doing from an innovation perspective? You're connecting your equipment, that's great. Now that Wall Street's asking the question, well, what are you doing with that? And 96% of business leaders, according to um, Gartner there, say that they're going to invest in IoT. So if everybody's investing in it, it's it's table stakes. And by 2020, if 95% of our products are going to have designs with IoT technology in them, not only is it gonna change our lives, but we need to think about if we're investing all of this money into it, how are we going to get it out? So we talked a little bit in the last webinar on, on organizational change. Um, uh, to support a successful IoT implementation. About three different companies, uh, three different kind of model companies that would be um, using IoT to take their products and services to the next level. And um, I think it's important to come back to these three examples and think about them a little bit more today on how they might monetize their solution. Um, these three different companies, they, like I said, are three different kinds of business models. We have a company that uses other OEMs equipment in their solution, like an oil rig operator, a factory or hospital, a company that's an OEM themselves, somebody that's making their own products and maybe wants to integrate some of that IoT technology into their product, and then a company whose, whose focus is service and how they might integrate um, IoT into their service offering. And, Let's think about today as we're kind of talking through the rest of this content. How might these three companies, these three different kinds of companies um, and business models, 
look to monetize that data connectivity. And those are, these are three different companies. They're all going to follow at least somewhat of a, of a common path. Um, you know, we've said before in the previous webinars that, that IoT and IoT development really is a journey, and the same thing goes with monetization. And the, how you monetize your IoT solution has to be thought about at every stepping stone in that journey. Um, you need to think about monetization as you're developing your strategy. You're thinking about your technology and your user base, but you also need to think when you're developing that strategy, how are we going to make money from this? Um, and that, that really it goes part and parcel with every single part of this journey. Aligning your organizational structure. How will you ensure that the way that you monetize is going to be acceptable throughout your entire organization? Um, as you're developing proof of concept, think about how are you going to charge for this and is that something built into your technology? Um, are your customers going to be accepting of your monetization strategy? How do they want to be charged? Um, and as you iterate on your product, you bring it to the market and you're planning for how it's supported, that same thought about how you're going to receive revenue or maybe save costs from that monitor, from that IoT and connected equipment um, needs to be part of that conversation. And another model um, that we've shown previously in these, in these webinars is this, this idea of maybe four different pathways um, or four different reasons why we're developing IoT solutions. And the reasons for developing solutions kind of align with how we might monetize those solutions. Um, you know, we're showing kind of four different pathways here. Two are very much focused on avoiding costs, um, that, that compliance um, thought about uh, being able to ease, facilitate um, compliance with industry standards or government standards, or um, on the east side, reducing risk or, or managing risk. Um, you know, we, we can think about really avoiding costs um, by implementing IoT in those, in those areas, and that's kind of a, um, a different way to think about monetization that's, that's opposite of generating revenue, which is more that north and south, that harvesting and services side. Um, the harvesting side is really more focused on optimization. How are you going to do more with less? Um, and that has a direct impact on your margin and your revenues. In the services side, you could be creating brand new revenue pathways um, with IoT and connected data. And that's kind of a, uh, a way to think about generating revenue with these four different, or these two different north and south pathways here. So moving on to um, another poll question, we'd like to ask the audience uh, that's on the phone today, is monetization part of the current conversation? So we've seen we do have a little bit of dichotomy in, in the maturity of IoT solution development with this audience, um, but I think it'd be very interesting to see, are you just focused on creating your technology or, you know, are you having mature conversations about how you monetize your solution? So we'll open up this poll here for about a minute, um, and then we'll get your feedback and, and talk through this a little bit. So a pretty a pretty decent spread here. Um, I'd like to I, I very much like to see that the uh, majority of the people uh, that answered the poll are really actively looking at how to monetize our solution. As, as Sean kind of mentioned, you know, including the right people um, from the beginning of, of developing a concept around connected equipment, um, involving the right people that you know, need to be dealing with, you know, that either cost avoidance or revenue generation from your solution early on in that process is, is very important. It looks like um, we've got the majority on the phone that are, that are doing that today. And for the folks that are just, you know, looking at that technology and collect and connecting your solutions, you know, today's the time to start. Um, figure out, you know, what value you can take out of that, out of that IoT solution and figure out what your customers, um, you know, could accept um, as far as, you know, getting access to that technology. What's, what's going to be the benefit to them and what value can they derive from it? So there have been a lot of different uh, little surveys over the last couple of years asking companies what their level of investment into IoT is going to be. 
And let's go ahead and jump to the slide here. We can end the poll. There we go. Um, all of these surveys have one thing in common. Everybody's going to be spending money on it. And this one survey that I ran into, that nearly six trillion will be spent on IoT solutions over the next five years. That is a significant amount of money that companies are spending. And I'm not surprised, honestly. Companies are investing in it. And if you think about the IoT ecosystem, there's hardware investment, there's time to think through these solutions, there's software, there's the programming, there's the applications, data science work and advanced analytics, which is not cheap, nor is it as fast as people think it is. So with all of this investment, you know, how are you actually going to monetize this? And there are successful companies doing it. I think there's a lot of value that we see being derived in the retail space. And as we present to you a rubric um, that can help you on that strategy. And essentially, you know, every company is looking to take those next steps. Some of the strategies that we find companies um, taking, and we want to reference it a little bit back to what we, those four things that Matt talked about. You know, if you've got an existing product, we can find companies enhancing uh, existing products. So you have Nexia, which is an IoT solution for um, doorknobs, for door locks on homes. Nest is something that we're all familiar with. It's an existing product. Um, there's a variety of ways that that can be done. And a lot of that is more hardware enabled. So you're selling additional uh, functionality on top of a hardware. You know, the Nest system is really just a smart thermostat, a smart piece of hardware. On the other side, you can take a look at enhancing existing services. And there's a company out there called SaltCo. If you have a water softener and they will monitor the levels of that water softener for businesses and consumers, and then they'll send you salt when you need it. You know, that's a service that they provide, and now they're integrating further into that service. As other companies, uh, B2B companies are looking at this, they're identifying it from a perspective of how can we maintain our aftermarket share? We have a service that we're already providing for some of our customers. How do we enhance that? IoT can do that. And you can charge an additional premium on top of that as a service. You know, you can take existing products and you can convert them into, into a, a service model. Uh, that would be something like power by the hour for airlines. We've probably heard that one, speaking generally here. We see that there are new products and new services being derived. Uh, a Fitbit is a brand new product and it's a new service at the end of the day. Um, there are different ways of establishing communication channels for sharing data. There's a variety of companies that are now setting up marketplaces for companies to integrate their data with, anonymize it, make it available, and they can go ahead and leverage that for their internal uses. And there's a lot of different revenue streams out there. And you're trying to identify different demographics for purchasing behavior within certain locations. You can go to like Experian data out there and integrate that. You know, they're working on monetizing all of the information that they're getting. And then lastly, here we have uh, a good one. When you, the media starts talking about artificial intelligence, they typically talk about the job losses that are going to happen out there. But at the end of the day, you know, IoT is essentially removing redundant behaviors. So if I, if I have a factory and I have now um, created an IoT solution on that and I'm looking to monitor quality, I can remove the man in the middle or I can produce more units at a higher quality. Um, you know, a lot of this is also about enhancing automation capabilities and a lot of cost savings that you can have at the end of the day. So it's not always directly uh, driving revenue. And we like to refer to these as tangible value and intangible value. So on the right-hand side here, we have costs, costs associated with an IoT solution. You've got all of these one-time costs that people think about and uh, really, um, realize that everything there, and there's a lot more listed there too, but it all is something that you're investing in. So when you put a POC together, you've got your pilot testing, you purchased a few, and I was talking with a company and they said, we have 80,000 things connected today. I didn't realize how much 80,000 things would cost to connect. And even if it's at $10 a piece, that's a significant amount of investment, capital investment that they have in order to 
connect up all of the equipment that they have out there for their customers. So you have all of these one-time costs and um, you have ongoing costs. So you've got even your platform maintenance and you've got your marketing and sales activities. You've got legal activities on top of this. These are ongoing costs that you need to account for when you're trying to define an ROI. And, and we've got the tangible value. We can get subscription revenue. We can get transactional revenue. There's the data revenue that you have. And there's what we refer to as ecosystem revenue. And Matt will talk a little bit about that later. At the same time, tangible value comes from better managing your supply chain, you know, improving sales efficiency, improved operational efficiency. When you're uh, when you you've re reduced your unplanned downtime um, on an operation center, that has significant impact in your bottom line. That's a tangible value. But then there's all of this intangible value that IoT solutions are creating and redefining how we interact with our world, and now I have applications to monitor. I have service relationships that are improved. I have more stickiness with my customers, so an improved customer experience. Internally, you're able to take that data back and improve your own products. There was a company that I was working with, and they talked about how through the connectivity, they found out that at a certain time period in the evening, customers were using their equipment differently. And they found out that that different use was something they hadn't even designed for or expected. And it was a small segment of their customers. And that allows them to go back into their product teams and say, hey, let's design our piece of equipment so it can do A and B at the same time so that they're getting, so that they're maximizing um, you know, their investment in our equipment and the relationship with us. We also see market share increase. So, you know, companies are out there competing for market share. That has some intangible value. You're looking at being able to respond to issues more quickly. You know, part of this automation idea. So if we remove the man in the middle, we can respond to customer needs more quickly. We can say, you know, they say, I've got a problem with my machine. You say, hey, my technician's on his way out there today. We already saw it. You know, being proactive around stuff at the same time. So, in our experience, you know, we, we've been, with, as Sean has mentioned a couple of times, we, we've been working with a lot of, a lot of customers and with different kinds of products, um, looking to monetize IoT solutions in different ways. And um, this is kind of our feedback on, on how long these ROIs really are. Um, on that revenue generation side, on doing more with less, we're talking about optimization, we're talking about um, you know, reducing spend with uh, the same or better amount of, of output. And uh, it, it may be more of a margin increase than a revenue increase, but you could see the effects um, on building that ROI almost immediately. As soon as you begin to optimize something, you know, on a, on a daily basis, um, you know, those, those costs that you have are going to go down and potentially the revenues you have coming in the door are going to go up. Um, more on that cost avoidance side with risk mitigation, um, especially if it has to do with safety, you can start to see that ROI almost immediately on integrating an IoT solution. You know, uh, if we can keep one person out of harm's way, I think that's that's already starting to build against that ROI. Um, you know, things on uh, avoiding costs of uh, potentially higher insurance premiums and things like that might take a little bit longer, but uh, especially if it's a safety thing. Um, you know, those ROIs start to build very, very quickly. Um, sticking to that cost avoidance side, um, compliance takes a little bit longer, um, you know, 12 months or more to start to see that ROI. Um, you know, these things on, on the compliance side really, really work on the schedule of certification and inspection. And if, you're, um, if you're working toward satisfying compliance um, metrics, uh, with your IoT solution um, to either get a better certification or uh, spend less money on um, providing the artifacts for that certification, you really do have to wait until the, the schedule of those certifications and uh, inspections come around. And on the services side, we're really talking about developing new data products. Um, and as everybody knows, product development takes a long time from, from start to finish. So the ROI is there going to be longer, but I believe um, you know, the in the end of uh, end of that product development cycle, you have something new to take to market. So potentially that um, that revenue from that kind of an IoT implementation could be greater than the other three.
So really on that revenue generation side, um, you know, we kind of touched on this a little bit before. There's several ways to receive revenue for the connected data products that you're creating. Um, you know, they can be they can be transactional models um, where you're actually directly receiving um, income from those data benefits that you're creating with your connected solution. Um, or you could do it a little bit differently with a subscription basis, you know, monthly or annually uh, receiving income for the access to data that's being generated or insights that are being generated or features that are enhanced by connectivity. Um, you know, we're all, we're all used to, to gaming on our, on our uh, cell phones, I think, today. And some of that is based on this premium service model where um, some of it's given for free, um, but then enhanced features may cost a little bit extra. And the same kind of thing can be done with, uh, with an IoT solution. Um, if you're providing a certain level of connectivity or data access to your entire user base, um, but then those that need it or would like it um, in a more enhanced fashion can pay for that directly. Now that's a, that's a premium service model. Um, pay for results is, is kind of similar um, uh, in, in the fact that you know, if your solution is generating benefit for your customer, if they're saving money, if, they're, if, they're, if your end customer, customer is able to increase their income from, from their products, um, you can be paid on the per, a percentage of those, of those incomes, uh, potentially. So only, only, paying, only getting paid when you're providing a benefit to your customer. Um, Pay-as-you-go models um, is a different way to think about this as well. Um, you know, our, uh, our car insurance companies are starting to do something like this, where you're only paying for um, your car insurance for the amount of miles that you drive, and that's a different way to do it that wouldn't be um, accessible without having connectivity to the, to, the, to the car, to the system in use. Um, similarly, providing machines as a service or um, or uptime as a service is a different way to monetize um, a solution. You know, it's transformational in that you wouldn't necessarily be selling your product, your device, but you'd be selling the uptime on that device. You'd be selling a certain level of service or 99% uptime and all of the, all of the uh, maintenance that goes into that. Um, but it's potentially a better way to um, allow your customer to budget. Uh, for the use of those machines, so a different way to think there. Um, and then on the on the strictly on the data side, the integration fees or the data sharing fees is a different way to monetize your, your um, IoT solution. With data integration fees, we're talking about uh, actually selling that um, that API, that access to the information, um, and uh, and the utility there, the hooks into that information. And a data sharing fees is actually packaging up some of that data. Um, maybe anonymizing it to a certain extent, but selling that data itself as a product. There's a lot of different ways to think about that. Um, and now uh, we'd like to think a little, or we'd like to ask you, how are you doing this? How are you um, expecting to monetize your IoT solution? So we'll throw up another poll here. Pretty All wide right. range here. Yeah. Subscription based. Strong third, pay for results, pay as you go, another third. Premium services, driving value there. And then a few on the data integration, data sharing side of things. And I think that's probably the hardest to wrap, to wrap our heads around collectively, is that data sharing and data integration fees. Unless it's the, the, the right kind of business, um, it may not make a lot of sense. Um, but maybe with further thought, that's something that could be integrated once you have one of these other monetization models going. It could be something that could be added on, that data sharing or data integration fees. And it could be, in a way, taking that, that solution to the next step, maybe toward, towards an ecosystem, as we'll talk about here shortly. Yeah. So I read across the survey by IDC. Let's go ahead and jump to the slides now. And it was asking customers or their survey respondents where exactly they're driving their revenue from and where they expect to in the future. And interestingly, you know, the, these IoT producers, they're looking at driving their revenue, half of the revenue from hardware, but they're looking at that going down. 
and a lot of the, the producers are saying that most of their revenue services are com revenue is coming from services. From the premium side of things, return on or off subscriptions, they've got some companies are leveraging IoT for new services, others are looking at it for repairs and sales on how they're getting the revenue. And as we started thinking about this, Matt and I were trying to put together a rubric for the participants here on the webinar. And, and you know, having been a participant of webinars myself, you're looking for that one one key insight or something that you can take that's advantageous here for tomorrow. And you know, our goal has been trying to do that for you so that you have something you can talk about, something that you can reference. And we put together what we refer to as IoT monetization maturity. And it starts here at the bottom of hardware. You've got hardware and service of functionality. And as you move up, you're getting into more complexity, you're getting into different ways of realizing value, you're getting into more um, more time it takes in the sales cycle. And at that bottom level, we start off with the service of functionality. And to me, that's very simple. Um, a good example there is like a ring doorbell. So you've got a doorbell that has a camera on it. Somebody walks up, it records that imagery in that situation, you know, they're selling the hardware, it's going from a $5 doorbell up to a $100 doorbell, it has a different additional functionality onto it. And with that functionality, you're going to provide a service. And the service that Ring can offer is for X amount dollars a month, they're able to go ahead and keep store all of those for you. So they'll store them for a month, but if you want them stored for the next 12 months, then you're going to pay a subscription service on top of that. And I recently read an article where Ring is starting to integrate with Amazon and Amazon pickups. And now you're moving up this ladder over here to this ecosystem side. Now, the other elements that we saw that we've thought about as, as you mature in your monetization, so you may be a company, you're starting out at hardware and you're selling that additional hardware. You've got some additional functionality that you're selling on it and you're providing a service there. Then you've got data monetization. Now, that data that you have, how can you go ahead and leverage that internally and externally? That can be use of the data, that can be pay for results, pay as you go. Um, another element is service of monitoring. And now you may be able to go to your customers and say, hey, you know, we can go ahead and monitor all of the equipment for you. We can monitor what's going on and we'll let you know when something has happened. So that's that's a a different way, it's an added value or a premium service on just on top of that service of functionality. And then within that orange there, we have kind of the automation. As you're making improvements, as you're getting rid of the man in the middle, you're creating more efficiencies, you know, you're generating value there. Now we go up to this, these top two, and the idea here is more around the data side. As Matt mentioned, it, it's a little bit harder for us to grasp our head around. Um, we have operational action, we have intelligent action, it's how do I link one thing to the next thing. If there's a piece of data, um, a result that comes out of this that says, hey, so-and-so, there's a piece of machinery that's going to be down here in the next month or in the next couple of days, what's that intelligent action that needs to be done and who are the people that need to know about it? Let's say you have a water pump that's out in the middle of a forested area and that water pump is making sure that the creek is running, that your that monitoring service that's providing that water to go downstream to support water for a community. You know, that water pump is in the middle of nowhere. It has to be monitored. And if it is monitored and you've connected it up you know, and there is an issue with it, who do you contact? Is it the company or is it a local technician that you've outsourced to? You know, there's a variety of different scenarios where we need to be able to integrate and share that data. So as Matt and I have been pontificating on this over the last couple of months, we think that this is a very good and sim simplistic but appropriate way for thinking about how you go about monetizing. And we, the next three slides here are going to talk a little bit about other scenarios. So I talked a little bit about the ring doorbell. We have service function. Um, we have home automation. Smart homes is a very good one where we can think about how are they automizing. Um, monetizing it. When it comes to home security, you have new vendors out there are competing against the service market. 
of what was entrenched by your other providers of home security. Now, from an IoT perspective, not only are they selling hardware, they're gaining revenue that way, but they're gaining revenue on the functionality, but they're gaining revenue on the automation and the monitoring side. They integrate into a full ecosystem. A smart homes is similar to the example that Matt was talking about of an oil rig where I have multiple manufacturers of equipment that all need to talk together. I mean, at the end of the day, Google Home would love for you to be their only vendor, and then same thing with Amazon Alexa. They're competing for that. But there's other vendors in this marketplace, too, that you can leverage. And they're all trying to work together at the end of the day. And they're all trying to find some ways of monetizing, even with that connectivity in that ecosystem. Another example is the OEM manufacturer directly. And as you notice here, you know, we've grayed out one of them on the top, that ecosystem side, because we were thinking through this, this from a OEM manufacturer is, it doesn't necessarily always play up in that space. And so for, I'm a mining company, for example, and I'm bringing in a couple different OEM manufacturers. Well, they're going to sell me the hardware. They're going to provide some functionality on top of that hardware. The Data may be available. We may have a sharing agreement or I may pay for some of that data from the different OEMs. And they may say, well, look, we want to provide a monitoring service or they have a monitoring service that they can um, offer me and I could subscribe to that. And then there's automation on top of that. And then ultimately it goes up into intelligent action, telling the right people to do the right things. And that's sharing the data. But you're not really going to go up into a higher ecosystem. You're not going to really play in an industrial side of things or even at a, a, an industrial manu uh, manufacturing facility where you're connecting things up. There's not a big ecosystem play there because you are owning everything. You're putting everything together. You're the ecosystem manager, for lack of a better term. And so from an OEM side, we think that this is really where they have a, a strong play and how they can think about um, driving revenue. And as you're looking at your own products and what you're putting together, you know, take this and go ahead and segment it into this. You know, what percent do we think we're going to get from hardware? What percent are we going to drive on a service of functionality? If we have that data, how can we go ahead and leverage that for a revenue base? Um, you know, being able to segment out where your revenue is coming from is going to help you mature in being able to leverage it in the future and then talk with your leaders about how to improve that revenue over time. Because once you are gathering revenue, the next step is to make sure you get more of it. That's just how businesses work. <laughs> now, here's an example as Matt and I were talking. And this one is very unique in our industry today. Stationary bikes. So you, it's not something you would think of, but there's a couple different companies out there. Peloton and Echelon are two companies that I'm familiar with where they've connected a stationary bike. And they've gone from um, a basic model of a stationary bike. They've added a premium service on that with connecting via wireless. And they've added a functionality on top of that. And that service of functionality has actually started encroaching and being seen as a competitor to fitness clubs out there. So for a reduced rate, I can do everything on my my stationary bike that I would do when I would go to the club. And I can interact with people, and I can interact with a trainer. I can do it all from home. Now, they're not focused on data monetization. They're not really going to go out and monitor that stationary bike and let you know when it's going to fail. Um, you know, there's no ecosystem outside of what they put together from the trainer and the coach's perspective and being able to, at 6.30 a.m., hop on a class, etc. cetera. But it, it is very unique. And it, this is how we see that they've monetized it. Now, they could look at this and find different ways to, to jump up the ladder in this space and monetize a bit differently. But, you know, these are three examples as we put together this rubric. We sincerely hope that this is something that connects with you, that makes sense, that you're able to um, build off of, ultimately. I'll pass it over to you, Matt. So we've kind of positioned this ecosystem level monetization offering at the top of our, of our chart that we've referenced. And, you know, it, it's up there at the top, but I think it's worth noting that, you know, that's not the end goal for every business. That ecosystem level that, or ecosystem model that we're going to talk about now isn't the end goal, you know, and for your business, you may need to only go up to the first or second tier there. Um, it might just fit your business model better. So we're not, we don't have them stacked up to say this is, this is the end goal. 
Um, we just want to make sure that you know that you're aware there are different things that you can do uh, to monetize your IoT solution. Um, you know, and when it comes to an ecosystem level offering, um, it takes a lot of understanding of your marketplace. <clears throat> um, you know, we kind of think about an ecosystem level offering um, like an app store. Um, you've got revenue coming from two directions. You've got revenue coming in from the user base, and you've got revenue uh, coming in essentially from the developer base as well. You're able to offload a lot of the product development onto an outside set of developers who then um, you're receiving essentially royalties from. Um, you're building a world that, uh, you know, the users and the developers can both exist in, play in, develop in, um, but you are really putting that capability, that development, development capability back into your ecosystem partners. Um, there's different ways to, to receive that revenue, but I think, I think maybe that app store is the best example to think about um, when, we, when we think about how an, an ecosystem monetization should work. Um, and you know, the big benefit of building an IoT platform into an ecosystem is you are gaining a lot of development capability without having to spend your capital on those resources. Um, so just to kind of maybe explain that a little bit better, I hope hopefully that's the kind of helped. Um, you know, and, and as I mentioned, the monetization models are not going to fit every single user um, and development uh, experience. Um, your users are going to de demand tons of flexibility in how the products that you're providing, products and services you're providing, are going to work um, and how they're going to be priced. And so I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to prepare yourself to be flexible to that. Um, offering premium um, at different levels, perhaps, uh, for users who need different levels of, of data integration or access um, is a way to do that. And your users are going to find different ways to use your product. You know, as, as Sean mentioned previously, um, you know, the company uh, provided a product, provided monitoring for that product, and went back and looked and found that, you know, around midnight their products were being used completely differently by, by a certain set of users. And they were able to take that data back in-house, redesign a product to fit that customer need. And the same thing is going to happen with any data product. You're going to find people who are going to use this tool in a very novel way. And it makes a lot of sense to prepare yourself to be flexible and un try to understand those different ways that users are using your connected tool um, and perhaps designing um, either the tool itself to better suit that user group or finding a way to better monetize your solution that's going to fit how the tool is being used by the user base that you may not understand. So we have about 10 minutes more, and we thank you for being a part of this conversation here. And I want to quickly identify two things before we jump into the Q&A. And there have been a few good questions here. And data as a product, and we've heard that data is the new oil. So different than oil, we have to take it out of the ground, we have to transport it, we have to do something with it. And the value of oil is really found in the refining process and how we can go apply it to the myriad of different things that we have in our world today. You know, oil started with standard oil, it's been around over 100 years, and it really has impacted our world beyond just being able to have lamps in homes for lighting. You know, it's, we need to think of our data as a similar way that, you know, we can't go, we have to go from data collection to data products to data management to data insights. And ultimately, just because you're collecting data does not mean that it's going to equal data utility or that you're going to be able to monetize that data or even have success with it. You know, this itself can also be a separate strategy and a monetization strategy aside from that IoT monetization strategy. Just briefly, very similar to everything else out there when it comes to designing good solid products you know your prod you need to have a go to market strategy and you know this we've thrown in a few things here for the slides for those here in the future who we'll download the slides um, and revisit them but you know 
this has been around for 50 years plus. How do you go ahead and have a go-to-market strategy? And it's very important. It should be thought of as a part of it. And we've seen many a customer, worked with many customers that say, hey, we just connected up and we're going to think about you know, how we're going to leverage it after the fact. And not realizing that as big of an investment as it is up front, that if you have that investment and you're now 12 months out before you have a monetization strategy, that's 12 months out that you are of potential revenues at the end of the day. Um, the only thing that I'd really like to identify here is, once again, human connection. Like we started out with, IoT is about connecting from human to human, making sure that things are at the right places at the right times. You know, that user experience is extremely important. Is what we found drives a lot of successful IoT solutions and products. Wanted to briefly note about sales. Sales is a bit different uh, when you're looking at IoT solutions out there from standalone devices to connected devices. I won't say anything more about it, but it is something to keep in mind as you're retraining your sales team to go ahead and help sell that and drive the revenue in your organization. You know, another, another takeaway here, this is, this is very brief, um, but we did want to leave you with a checklist, um, whether you're going about monetization um, for, uh, from the revenue generation perspective or the cost avoidance perspective, a quick checklist um, as you're developing uh, your pathway to monetization. Two things that are similar between these pathways is understanding and developing a strategy for monetization along with your IoT technology development, extremely important. And being user-centric, we keep talking about this, the human value um, coming out of IoT understand that you're going to live and die by your users. Um, IoT and connected equipment gets every, every company a step closer to their user base and making sure that that's well understood as you're developing the strategy is absolutely paramount. Um, having a great go-to-market strategy um, goes along with um, technology adoption and making sure that it's going to be acceptable by your, your customer base, especially when we're thinking about revenue generation, and knowing that customer, um, how they expect to be paying for the benefits of your solution um, is something that, that needs to be included in that checklist. The cost avoidance model is maybe a little bit more um, mysterious, but one thing there um, is if we're avoiding costs, we need to understand the cost that we're trying to avoid, and knowing uh, with certainty what those costs are before you start out um, and what kinds of issues you're trying to prevent with your connectivity solution is going to get you a long way to developing that monetization strategy in that cost avoidance model. And one other thing to note there in that cost avoidance model, your internal stakeholders need to understand the benefits of the technology that you're putting in place uh, from uh, you know, a, a risk management side, a compliance side, but also in how those tools are to be used to save money. And without that internal adoption and without effectively communicating what that technology is going to do, uh, it's not going to be successful. So that's something else very important to note on that cost avoidance monetization. So, question and answer. Question. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, we've got one really good question here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're talking. You're probably looking at the same thing. Um, a really good question think, here is: Do you have any monetization using energy blockchain for digital fluid currency? Uh, blockchain is something we could have talked about. We didn't talk about it today. Um, you know, my thoughts is that it is going to be a game changer in many different areas. The technology is still growing and maturing, and energy is another significant industry that is finding a lot of change with the IoT side of things. Um, you, you know, I, I think about going back to the, the seven things that we listed um, and, and trying to identify, you know, if you are an energy aggregator, where are the different areas that you can pay, you can play, and, it, you know, maybe you start within a premium service model, but you're starting out at a small foot that you, you mature within that certain box. Matt, your thoughts? Well, I think I think I agree there, um, and there's obviously a lot of parallels that can be drawn between you know monetization models um, and how those that energy is traded. Um, 
and exactly what that strategy is, I think, is going to depend on where you are in that value chain. Um, you know, where you sit, what your product is, or what your service is, it's really going to determine how how you go about forming that strategy. So that's something that we could probably take um, in a little bit more detail one on one. Um, you know, we are we are available to kind of handle these things offline too. Um, if you've got a specific problem or question or, or solution you want to want to talk about developing. So I think that's a, that's a pretty advanced thought there, and I, I really do appreciate the question. Um, another thing yeah. popped up uh, oh. earlier uh, that we had a question about access to the previous webinars. You know, we've referenced them a couple times throughout our talk today. Um, at the close of this, um, I think there will be a short survey, and everybody should get an email after, um, after the close of this webinar that should have links back to the other two webinars and the recording of this one as well. So, all of that should be at your fingertips um, shortly after we close today. We have another question. Um, does it, IoT require ML big data for sure? You know, at its simplistic core, an IoT solution can be sensorizing a device and pushing it up to the cloud onto a mobile phone in an application. You know, you don't have to store the data, and that's what big data is, is all about data storage and making sure that you have the efficient use of that data and making it accessible to lots of different people. And then the machine learning side of things is creating different value out of that data. You, know, you have a specific business question or problem that you're trying to solve, and you're using analytics, machine learning, to help you do that from a predictive nature or even a categorical nature categorization perspective. And so, you know, every IoT solution is going to mature over time, and as you have a product manager that's helping mature that solution, you also need to have somebody that's focused on how do we mature the revenue stream that we have with IoT also at the same time. So I hope I answered your question. You know, it doesn't necessarily require it, but it is a part of um, what I would consider a mature IoT solution. I think I'd agree with that, um, but there is there's a tremendous class of, of products and services out there um, that can be built uh, with IoT that don't don't require it. So I would say absolutely it does not require ML big data. We think about things like um, you know a, say a connected garage door opener. You've got that link to your smartphone. You know when your garage door is up or down. Maybe you can you can make it go up or down from your smartphone. Um, share that with somebody else if you need to let the dog walker in or out. But, uh, you know, there's there's no machine learning or big data necessary for that solution. It's something that, that could be, you could perceive, um, you know, a large amount of, of revenue from. So I think hopefully that answers it in a little bit different way. Yeah, but even as, Matt, as you were talking there, you know, that fits into the model that we put together where that garage Absolutely. door opener can just be transactional and you can have a premium service and you're done. You know, and, and you've got some additional revenue stream from that, and you're able to you know, grow that market share bigger as people think about the functionalities that the garage door openers can offer in their lives. You know, at the end of the day, it is about that human connection. We all want simplicity, um, and we hope, we hope, and we thank you for participating in the webinars and on these webinar series. We hope that you, we've been able to convey some piece of insight and some piece of utility that you can bring towards what your IoT solutions are that you're putting together, and we'd be delighted to talk with you in the future. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, all. With that, thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.